It had been a few days since I was discharged from the hospital. Why was I hospitalized, you may ask? I attempted suicide. The love of my life, the girl who I had planned to spend my whole life with, had left me. The doctors told me to talk to my friends and spend more time with my family. I tried to do that. I went out with my friends and visited my parents whenever I could, but there was no way I could forget about it. I wanted to meet her. I wanted to tell her that she had left me in so much pain that I could not bear it. The day came when I was going to meet her. I was meeting her for the first time after my failed suicide attempt. Maybe it was the miracle of God, or just a coincidence, that I was sitting in our favorite cafe, waiting for her at the place and at the same table where we had met for the first time. I waited for a long time, but she showed up at last. She came late as usual and sat in front of me. She looked beautiful as always. She had bright eyes and dark hair brushing over her shoulders. I was staring at her face with love and anger at the same time. I was happy to see her, but I was angry as well that she left me all alone without any reason. She was making lame excuses for being late, as she always did. She apologized to me in the end that she was late and admitted her mistake. Her being late did not bother me anymore, and I had gotten used to it. I was waiting for her to come to the point and talk to me about the matter at hand. She, Wow, isn't the weather lovely today? Looks like it's going to rain. That was her line when she knew that I was in a bad mood. She would try to distract me from the problems and try to cheer me up by asking silly questions or passing lame comments. I did not say a word and was just sitting quietly in front of her, staring at her beautiful face. When she saw that I am serious, and there is no way to dodge the discussion this time, then she finally broke the ice. She, How is it going? That is all she asked while staring back at me. Her tone changed. Instead of being cheery as always, her tone was less loud. That was all she had to say. The moment she asked that question... I got angry. Me. I thought that I would never see you again. She looked at my angry face, but was calm and collected. She. How could I not come? After what you tried to do to yourself, you just attempted suicide. I wanted to meet you and talk to you about it. I got angry at her comment. I was furious. I tried to justify my act. I knew that my anger was uncalled for but I couldn't control myself. Me. There is nothing to talk about. So what if I attempted suicide? I had no other option. It's my life, and it's my choice whether I want to live or not. You left me suddenly. Why would you bother? Why we have to meet here? I just hate this place. The irony here is laughable. It was I who was dying to meet her. It was me who attempted suicide because she left me. I was trying hard to hide my love and emotions for her. I was just showing the anger that had built up inside me and would explode any time. She, But why? You always said that this place was very special to you. This is where we met the first time, at this very table. Remember? How come you hate this place? Me, No. This place just reminds me of all the fake promises that you made. You promised that you would love me forever. We would get married, have children and a sweet home. But you broke all the promises. You deceived me. She. So you tried to kill yourself? This is so unlike you. You were the one who used to tell me how precious life is. And now you are saying the opposite just because I am not with you anymore? Only a coward takes his own life. You cannot escape reality by making such attempts. You should accept what has happened and move on. After hearing her, I could not stop myself, and I exploded. Me. No! My kind of people only do this because there is no hope left, and life is not worth living without loved ones. When you left me, nothing else came to my mind, and this loneliness was gnawing at me. I was shattered. I felt that there was no use living anymore, 
so I tried to end my misery and take my own life, but I failed at that as well. Had you not left me, I would not have tried to do that. You were responsible for that. I know it was pathetic of me, just for the sake of arguing back I was being mean and rude. My tone was harsh and I was loud. She, listen to me, you need to understand that life is a precious gift. That is what you have taught me all along. You shall not waste this gift being unhappy and sobbing over what has happened in the past. Ah, her politeness. She would always listen to all I had to say and would politely try to make me understand the situation. I never saw her angry and she never talked to me in a loud voice. In all of her speech, I countered her with only one simple question. Why did she leave me like this? Me. Why did you leave me? Did you not know that I would be lonely without you? That my life would end the moment you left? This was the question that was the most difficult to answer, for me and for her. She. You have to accept this. This is the reality. Always remember that after every dark night, there's always a brighter day. Don't worry. She tried her best, but deep down inside both of us knew that what had happened could not be reverted. Me. I cannot live like this. I miss your smile. I miss your kisses. And I miss your hugs. What do I do now? Just tell me what I should do, please. She. I know it is difficult, but trust me, time will heal everything. I'm not the end of your life. I was just a part of it. Now it's time to turn over a new leaf and find someone who will give you all the love that you deserve. Me. Is there any way that we can be together again? Look, I am not able to survive even a single day without you. The reason I attempted suicide, that I felt that my body, my breath, my blood... My heartbeat, in fact, everything in my body was tearing apart. I am damn serious, love. I just cannot take a single breath without you by my side. When I said this, her eyes filled up with tears. She, no, it cannot happen. The moment she said that, my heart broke into a million pieces. My heart was bleeding, and I felt this loneliness that shattered my soul. Suddenly, she handed over a ring. It was the ring that I had given to her as a gift. She, I never wanted to see you crying with such pain. I always wanted you to be happy, forever. Listen to me, don't ever feel like you were alone, because as long as you love me, I will always be with you in your heart. When the salt breeze touches your cheeks, it shall be my breath. We will be together again, and then we will have so much to talk about. You know I'm going to wait for you, no matter how long. Until then, just be happy. How could she give back the ring I gave to her? She could have just thrown it away. Was she trying to insinuate that if she gave me the ring I would forget her? I punched the table in my fury, and everyone in the restaurant looked at me. A waiter came walking to me. Waiter. Sir, are you okay? Who are you talking to? Do you want me to call for a doctor? Me. Um, yeah, I am okay. I was just talking to my... I was shaken to see that there was nobody sitting in front of me. I realized that she had left me a month ago, when she died. This realization filled me with sorrow once again. It was not her fault that she left me. It happened all of a sudden. I know she loved me so much, and there was no way she would have left me even if she wanted to. Me. I'm sorry. Please send the bill. I tried to remain as calm as possible. Waiter. Okay, sir. The waiter left the bill on the table. I opened my hand to reach my wallet and saw it. The ring was still there. That was the moment when I remembered her words, that even death could not take us away from each other, and that I should not ever feel like I am alone because she would always be in my heartbeats. She would always be there for me. When I remembered these words of hers, I felt at ease for the first time since my attempted suicide. She was gone, but she would always be by my side. She is not with me anymore, so what? Whenever I will miss her, 
all I will have to do is to just close my eyes, and she appears well in front of me. Love is not the relation of two bodies, but the relation of two souls.